All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to continue with our review of fifth grade semester one, math. We're going to move on to module two today. So we get to do a Roman numeral two finally. Roman numeral two. And again, this is for module two. Just like we did in module one, this will be the first half. So this will be everything that was up to the mid-module review. And just like that, your notes are going to look very similar to what we did in lesson 2-15. All right. First off, in module 2, module 2 was multiplication and division. We started with a lot of discussion about using mental math. Now, obviously, you can't always use mental math. I'm always telling you to use graph paper. Graph paper is super important especially for this, but there are times when you can take a little bit of a mental shortcut and save yourself some time. So let's zoom in a little bit there and I'll give you an example. Let's say we have something like this. 700 times, let's say 3,000. Now these are some larger numbers, but they're mostly zeros. This means they're multiples of 10. Multiples of 10 are super easy to work with. All we do is box up the non-zero digits. And multiply those. Now obviously there's a little bit of a trick with the zeros. If you haven't already, go ahead and pause the video, solve this, and when we come back, I'll finish it up here to check your work. Okay, 7 times 3 is 21. And I always like to box that because if you get something with a 0, it helps separate it out from what you're going to do next. After you've got the answer, 7 times 3 is 21, then we're going to count the zeros. 1, 2 zeros, 3 zeros, 4 zeros, 5 zeros. And I'm going to put that many zeros after the 21. One two, three, four, five. This all ties in, and I guess we do have a little comma here now, this all ties in with what we were doing in module one, talking about the place value chart and how things get 10 times bigger as they move in one direction, one tenth the size as they go in the other. All right, okay, letter B. Let's talk lesson two. Lesson two was about estimating, and specifically estimating larger products. So building off of what we just did in lesson one, if I give you something that is not made of mostly zeros, if I give you something more like this, 532 times 7,940, Wow, I got one zero. Not terribly helpful. If I can change this into something that looks like that, then I can use mental math to multiply. So, take a second. Remember what we talked about with rounding? Remember rounding to the whole numbers, rounding to the greatest place value? Round each of these numbers, then use that to estimate. Use that to get approximately what this would be equal to. Hopefully you paused and had a chance to do that. 532, if I'm rounding to the greatest place value, if I'm rounding to the hundreds, I look next door. Four or less, the three is less, so it says, hey, five, just rest, relax. So the five does, the five hangs out and becomes 500. I change the other digits to zero. This is three digits, so this should probably still be three digits. 532 down to 500. This time, 7, the greatest place value, is the thousands. 7 looks next door. This is 5 or more and says, 7, you got to soar. So the 7 flies away and transforms into an 8. 1, 2, 3 spaces. 1, 2, 3 zeros. 
Go ahead and multiply that the same way we did in lesson one. Five times eight is 40. There's one of those zeros I was talking about. So that's why I boxed this up. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. It's a lot of zeros. Let me zoom out so you can see them all. Okay. This is again why I like to box up this part while I'm working, even if I am doing it quote unquote mentally. I like to have that separated and realize it's got to be five more zeros. This one is part of the 40 and does not count. One, two, three. One, two, three. So this should be approximately equal to about four million. That's a fairly large product. Okay, letter C. This is something I definitely want you to practice and we will be talking about a lot in class, if we haven't already. Reading and writing numerical expressions. Reading and writing numerical expressions. This is at the heart of solving word problems. We need to be able to read and write. We need to be able to write numerical expressions based on information that we're given. We need to be able to write number sentences based on what we read in a word problem or see on a test. For example, if I give you 16 less than the product of 4 and 12. And really those would normally be words, but we're running out of space on the line. 16 less than the product of 4 and 12. Pause the video, see if you can write a number sentence based on that. And again, if you can't, I am going to show you, well, I'm going to show you either way, Pause, we'll see what you get. Okay, 16 less than. This is a very challenging phrase, that's why I picked it for this review. A lot of students missed this on the test over this material. If you have less than, a lot of people recognize that that's subtraction and that's great, we need that. Okay, the problem is they continue reading in order, 16 minus, that's not the case here. If it's 16 less than, English is weird, I don't know why it's worded this way, but 16 less than means you are subtracting 16 away from whatever's over here. The product of, when you see the product of, the sum of, the quotient of, the difference between, Think about those parentheses that I love so much. I mean, they're not arrows or anything like that, but I do enjoy them. Product, well, that's multiplication. Product of four and 12. Okay. 16 less than, so 16 taken away from, the product, multiplication, of four and 12. If I solve what's in the parentheses, I would get 48. Subtract 16 from that. The answer to this equation, to this numerical expression, would be 32. Okay. All right. I know these notes are getting a little lengthy, so I'm going to try to speed up a bit. Lesson four. I'm actually not even really going to give you any examples or anything. Lesson four was a review of multiplication properties. We've talked about these before. This is the commutative, the associative. The big one is the distributive property. That one we may talk about a little bit more in class. Multiplication properties it's important, but it's going to be kind of baked into the other things we're about to do. So don't worry, we're not going to do much on that right now. We're going to jump straight to lesson five. Lesson five. 
the area model using the area model if I give you something that looks like this 14 times 27 then you are going to draw a rectangle you are going to break these numbers into expanded form so 14 10 plus 4 right tens plus the ones 27 20 plus 7 and I could do this with much larger numbers if this had been 275 this would be 200 plus 70 plus 5 okay. but we'll stick to the two digits 20 times 10 is 200, excuse me. Sorry, folks, 200. This is a lot like using a multiplication chart, just where they intersect, 20 and 1, 10. 20 and 10, put their product there. 20 times 4 is 80. 7 times 10 is 70. 7 times 4 is 28. And then we just go ahead and add these together. 20 plus 80 is 280. 70 plus 29 is 98. And then if I combine those two, if I add those up, your answer is 378. Okay. Now that I didn't pause, maybe some of you did, but I didn't ask you to pause because this is another one that I know was kind of challenging for some friends. So. We'll talk about it more together, but just so you have a general idea of what we're talking about. Now, we're going to do a little bit of a cheat with the next one. We are going to combine lessons 8, basically 8 through 14. Because at this point, we started using the standard algorithm. And this is where I'm going to stop for today. I'm going to give you a couple practice problems using the standard algorithm. The big thing I want you to remember with the standard algorithm, this is the vertical multiplication. I keep saying this. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, I'll show you in a minute. This is the vertical where you write it up and down. The number, the number of decimal I know you guys love it when the bell goes off in the background, sorry. The number of decimal places in the factors determines the number of decimal places in the product. So, if I give you something that looks like this, 756 times 3 and 2 tenths. First of all, you notice in multiplication we do not have to line up the decimals. It's a little something extra for you to not have to worry about for once. You do not have to line up the decimals. But we will count them. There is only one decimal place, one digit behind a decimal point in this particular problem. That means that there will only be one decimal point, excuse me, one decimal place, I always do that, one decimal place in the final product. Okay. Let me give you another one. Let's do 8,321 times 11.4. Okay. Bigger numbers. 8,000 versus 700. 11 instead of 3, but still only one decimal place. For the last one, I'll go down to a slightly smaller number. Well, Let's do two slightly smaller numbers. However, now we have a decimal in both factors. 
one, two places total. So my product is going to have one, two decimal places. Go ahead and pause, solve those. I'll give you the answers in just a moment, and then we'll take questions in class. All right, hopefully you solve that out on your own. This first one would be 2,000, which I better make sure I write it correctly so that I don't say it incorrectly, 2,419 and 2 tenths and two-tenths, just as we predicted, only one decimal place. This next one is kind of a monster. 94,859 and four-tenths. Okay. Once again, super long, but only one decimal place. The last one, kind of silly because it's a little short. Now, this one actually, I'm going to work out because when I picked these numbers, I should have been thinking ahead a little bit more. You end up with something a little unusual here, don't you? 5 times 2 is 10. Carry the 1. 5 times 5 is 25. Plus 1 is 26. Now, that was my focus number. 5 times 2, 5 times 5. I'm all done with it. I'm all done with that. My next focus number is 2. I have to put a spacer 0 here to make sure my answer works properly. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 5 is 10. When I add these together, 0 plus 0 is 0. 6 plus 4 is 10. Carry the 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. Nothing plus one is just one. One, two decimal places. One, two decimal places. So the answer did have two decimal places. However, they're both zeros. So your answer actually ends up being a whole number. 2.5 times 5.2 ends up being a whole number. So maybe not the best example I could have picked there. All right, we're going to go ahead and stop here. Once again, if you have any questions, please bring them to class. Thanks, folks. I will see you then.